Okay, so Amy, welcome to the Search Nanaimo show. Hi, thanks for having me. Yeah, very excited. Actually, I, we were just talking about this, but when I was going through your Instagram stories, um, there was one of you doing a cartwheel in, in your coffee shop, which you're now in, I think. Um, yep. So maybe we, that's a good place to start. You could tell us a bit about kind of how long you've been open for and what the, the genesis was to start a coffee shop and, and why you were doing cartwheels. <laughs> Absolutely. Yeah. So um, we've, uh, we're a specialty coffee shop and community space, and we have been open for a little bit over a year now. Um, my partner and I started White Rabbit as a way to kind of uh, connect and engage with our community. We're new to Nanaimo, but also as a way to use all of our skills in one place. He's a carpenter by trade, so all of the renovations in here were done by him. So I got first dibs at like trying out the new floor doing a carpet. Yeah space um, but we we built this space to be a reflection of who we are as people but also um, to serve the community in the best way we know how which is connecting with local artists using fresh local ingredients and just providing a safe space for people to connect yeah it obviously saves some serious dollars on renovations when your other half is uh, a carpenter that must be useful absolutely <laughs> Yeah, he, uh, it, it's also a benefit and a detriment because I can ask him to build anything I want, but it also means he's always working. <laughs> yeah, just before you sit down and relax, I got this idea. Can you please uh, build another table? Actually, I saw your table is a big feature, right? Like that's one of your... Yeah, and we're big... planning this summer to build um, a brand new patio space outside that will seat 15 to 20 people. Amazing. I love it. I like that outdoor. Outdoor space is really cool. And actually, close to where you are, there's a pub also on your road, right? Yeah, right next door. We're actually, the building is one building, but our uh, spaces are separate. And so the pub next door has one of the biggest patios in the Nimo. Right. Yeah, it's nice. Uh, obviously, um, well, not necessarily obviously, but maybe from my voice. But growing up in England, I'm very used to like the outdoor patio scene and sat around picnic tables drinking pints of beer. So when I found that place, um, sitting out the back there was, was very nice. So yeah. it's a nice spot so maybe i'll go after after a couple of beers you'll need a coffee to uh to it's a nice compliment and we try <laughs> each other the best we can but we know that we have we have a view of mount benson we get the sun in the afternoon it's a great place to end your day for sure yeah beautiful so um what would you say that uh white rabbit is best known for in the community apart from obviously the art and the coffee and i have to say um I saw you making a post about making muesli, which is muesli is one of my favorite things in the world. Um, so what is your sort of trademark thing or, or drink? What would you say about that? Ooh, um, well, we make a lot of really unique drinks, which I do think set us apart because we like to pull ingredients that are local and natural and kind of create things within our environment. Mm. But most notably, I actually think it's our chocolate chunk cookie. People go nuts for it. Right. Um, all of our baking, uh, we started doing in-house about six months ago, and it gave us the opportunity to transition to entirely gluten-free and vegan baking. But my goal with that was to make all of the baking delicious and accessible for people who don't need vegan or gluten-free baking. So yeah. grandmother will love this cookie. You know, my partner's dad will love this cookie. Anybody can love it. And uh, it's really kind of taken off. Yeah, that's so cool. Actually, I've been one of the people during this uh, coronavirus who's, I've done it before, but I've kind of rekindled my um, efforts at sourdough. So I had, a, I had a starter, which I did like a couple of years ago, which I thought was dead because it had been in my fridge for so long and it had kind of turned blue and looked a bit moldy. And then uh, I took it out and put some more flour and water with it and started rocking it again. And I've been, been cranking out the sourdough. So it's good to um, yeah, make something from scratch is fun absolutely yeah yeah and i think the you know my you know a lot of the time we eat gluten-free um and uh, we've got people in the family here who don't eat dairy or eggs or anything like that so i think having those options are becoming increasingly sought after as well which is cool and i also think that it's easy like it's easier to offer one thing that's accessible to everybody than trying to meet the needs of yeah. 10 designations so if we can do that one thing excellent then great we have our bases covered yeah i like it all right so we've got to come in for the chocolate chunk cookies then absolutely yeah, sounds good <laughs> um how have things changed for you during coronavirus times and uh i know that you've recently opened up some service again so maybe you could talk a bit about that yeah 
definitely. Um, I think I think we're constantly adjusting and readjusting. It, everything changes so fast, and each week is a little bit different. So we did make the decision late March to close our doors entirely until we found a way that we could open safely. We are continuing to offer contactless deliveries. So if you need bags of coffee, ground or whole bean. Um, we're also offering uh, batches of our baked goods. So if you do love our cookies, I'll deliver six of them to you, no problem. Um, but I'm gonna need two dozen of those chocolate chunks, please. <laughs> and yeah. the, the best part about all of this is it's opened up um, to a wider range of people. Because we're in the south end of town, the majority uh, of people who live in the north don't often get a chance to come down here. So mm. we have been having a lot of people order our stuff so that we, they can try it up in the north. But with reopening about three weeks ago for window service. Um, we've seen just so much support. We've operate, we're operating out of our back door where people can walk up, place their order um, and take away. All of our, um, we're very lucky in that we have a giant awning uh, on the side of the building, which means you're totally covered from the rain, you're covered right. from the sun. So you can line up any time of the day and we'd be able to help you. Yeah, that's so that's so good. It seems like a common theme that um, you know, in businesses in and I think beyond, but the the current situation is forcing people to innovate beyond maybe the speed at which they would have done it anyway. Um and so definitely I'm I'm hearing a common theme amongst local businesses that people are you know, getting into online platforms quicker in terms of point of sale or a way to transact and also delivery companies or restaurants or uh, businesses that have never delivered before are now like, well, maybe we could deliver as well. Um, mm -hmm. So I think it's, it's nice to um, hopefully come out of this with some extra, you know, extra um, ideas or, or routes to market, right? Absolutely. We never considered um, selling things like our muesli that we serve in-house. We never considered selling them as a bag for someone to take home. But what mm. this shown us is that a lot of the products that people know and love in our shop, if we can find a way for them to love and enjoy them at home, then we want to do that. So that's our next endeavor is taking things like our hummus, our muesli, um, our granola and making it accessible for people to have at home in a, a safe environment. Mm. Muesli and gro granola, you're talking my language. Um, <laughs> So outside of, uh, outside of uh, coffee, what else are you passionate about? What else do you do for fun? Well, um, art, honestly, has always been at the core, which is why we, we pose ourselves as a, a, an art gallery rotating to give visibility to local artists. So when I'm not here, um, I'm usually taking photos out somewhere or I'm drawing or I'm working on a, a website of my own or a website mm. for my book. There's always something creative happening, which is where we center our business. It allows us to drive everything that we do. And it also allows us to have a lot of fun while we're doing it. Yeah, I guess it's sort of, it's bringing together sort of two of your influences and putting them into one output, right? Which is really nice. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. And were you, are you from Nanaimo originally? Like what, um, what brought you here, if not? Um, originally from Winnipeg. Um, okay, my first, that uh, makes sense. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Makes sense, yeah. yeah. We're used to um, a very different structure of life, a very go, 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 fast pace, um, and a uh, very different climate as well. Mm. In the Nanaimo, the first thing that I noticed when I came here was just how connected everything was. You know, it is has that big city, small town feel at the same time, and it's something that I don't think is replicated anywhere else, and it's something I definitely don't take for granted. I yeah. do the trees and I love the waterfront, but the connection that we feel when we're here is greater than any I've felt ever. Yeah, I totally agree. And after moving from England to Canada, I first lived in Toronto and after um, a, a number of very cold winters, which you could resonate with being from Winnipeg, I came to Nanaimo and I was just like, wow, there's like daffodils in February and March. It's crazy. <laughs> Get outside. Absolutely. Right. Yeah, so good. Well, thank you so much for coming on um, the Search and Limo show. I can't wait to get out and, and sit in the coffee shop once it opens up again. Um, yeah, and thanks very much for your time. Thank you. Good to chat. Cheers. Cheers.